Back to England and the Airedale, who was originally developed to hunt otters, water rats and other vermin that polluted the streams in and about the River Eyre. Centuries ago, an otter drag was considered sport. Otters are courageous creatures whose huge teeth can inflict a lethal bite. They can also outswim dogs as well as run for miles across land. An otter drag began with otter hounds finding the otter either hiding among reeds or water lilies or running into its den or holt. The terrier would bolt the otter into the stream where, after a long chase by both the terrier and the otter hounds, the poor exhausted creature was finally speared, drowning at the end of this barbaric purpose-built tool. A terrier that was a good swimmer was developed by these sportsmen. So the Airedale was born from a cross between the otter hound and the terrier with which he worked. The result was the king of terriers, whose size, tenacity and brains have made him one of the most versatile of all breeds. Once the Airedale became recognised as a pure breed, his versatility was used in many ways. In America and Africa, he hunted big game. In England, the Airedale became known not only as a household guard, but also capable of doing anything for which he was properly trained, even golf caddying or retrieving across water. At first, the English police used him as an assistant on nightly duties. Soon, they recognised his ability to assist in the apprehension of criminals in the face of fire, regardless of where that criminal might attempt to hide. It was amazing indeed how he was taught to climb anything. He was also trained for the man work associated with policing for which he is still used today. As we have already seen, this recreational man work is called dog sport or schutzend. A three phase activity comprising tracking, obedience and protection work. This Airedale is looking behind every hide for the person who is wearing the sleeve. He is a Schutzen 3 dog, which means he has earned the highest possible title. This exercise is a mock arrest. The dog is left to watch the man and grab him by the arm when he attempts to run away. The dog must hold on until commanded to let go. So the dog is under perfect control at all times. The exercise concludes when the man is disarmed and taken into custody. Attached to the Red Cross in wars prior to and during the First World War, he was taught to find wounded soldiers in signal. 
work for which the Airedale is widely used today. This is a demonstration of search and rescue. Alternatively, he was taught to bring back an article, signalling his find. The Airedale's sturdy size made him capable of being trained like this, so that he could travel long distances over rough and difficult terrain. If human aid was not immediately possible, the dog would return to base and load it up, bringing a variety of provisions back to the wounded. These could include a thermos, first aid, blankets and so on. Airedales had also been used as war dogs before the outbreak of World War I. At first the dogs were used purely as sentries or watchdogs. Warning of enemy approach. As the war progressed, Airedales were trained as messenger dogs. These courageous, sturdy, swift running dogs would carry messages in their collars. When other forms of communication became impossible due to heavy shelling and gas attacks, Vital messages were sent and received by these wonderful dogs. The dogs were trained to wear gas masks, as mustard gas affecting soldiers was a big problem in World War I. Somewhat protected by masks, these brave dogs carried out their duties despite these horrendous gas attacks. As Airedales became increasingly sought after as messenger dogs, whole kennels concentrated on their training. Some even claim these messenger dogs turned World War I around. Airedales also assisted communication by running field telephone cables between command centres in the trenches. At the end of each cable was a field telephone handset, often delivered by the dogs. So messages were received and transmitted, keeping whole battalions in touch when heavy shelling and mustard gas attacks prevented all other means of communication. Gunfire, mustard gas and night time presented barriers through which homing pigeons would not fly. Airedales carried pigeons back to a position away from the front so the birds could be released to take messages home. Airedales became such a vital resource to the British during World War I that the enemy acquired some of this English breed to fight on the opposite side. Today, the Airedale is still the largest and most substantial of all terriers. He is a fairly cobby dog without legginess or undue length of body. As we watch his development as a show dog, over more than a century, you can appreciate why he has earned the name the King of Terriers.
Reed standard used to include a weight limitation of 45 pound, but this was deleted half a century ago, allowing for any amount of bone and substance. Today, only his height of 22 to 24 inches is specified in the standard. Here you can see the big, sturdy, symmetrical terrier developing, always free from the slightest suspicion of clumsiness. The Airedale is a terrier who combines strength and activity to a very remarkable degree, yet is full of the highest quality. He possesses intense terrier character, yet at home the Airedale is always a gentleman. He has a long head with great strength of foreface and side placement ears, which are a remnant of his otterhound ancestry. The Airedale's body coat is always black or dark grizzle, with all other parts varying shades of tan. The coat texture is hard, dense and wiry, with undercoat that is often somewhat silver in colour with an oily feel, also reflecting his otterhound ancestry. The Airedale moves freely with great propulsion from the rear. He should always be in hard condition, full of dash and fire, and ready for any kind of game or sport.